800-899-8443. That's 800-899-8443. Welcome to a discussion of radical fundamental principles of freedom, rational self-interest, laissez-faire capitalism, and individual rights. The Yaron Brooks Show starts now. Happy Sunday, everybody. I hope you're having a great weekend, and uh, welcome to the Yaron Brooks Show. You know, uh, as we speak, uh, one of the great uh, modern tragedies uh, in the humanitarian crises, political crises, a, a, an authoritarian regime is is uh, establishing absolute control over its country. And one of the most striking things that I find right now is that there's almost no coverage in the American press about this. Almost no coverage. Talk about false news. Talk about bias in the news. Well, this is this is an example of the real bias that exists in the mainstream media, but, but across the entire, the entire board. Venezuela is descending into absolute authoritarianism. It's been an authoritarian state for over a decade, but with a semblance, with a pretense of, uh, of democratic elections, of uh, some uh, protection of, of rights. But that semblance, that pretense, has disappeared completely over the last few weeks, and it has been, indeed, disappearing slowly over the last uh, few years. But most Americans have no clue and, and, uh, because it's not being covered by the media. You, you couldn't tell what's going on in Venezuela if, if you were just listening to news. I mean, once in a while, there'll be a story. But, you know, if, if, if one stabbing happens in Israel or, or, or one little thing happens in um, in, in, in France, or if, uh, if, if the media thinks the, uh, the Israeli government is doing something bad, oh, it's all over the place, it's 24-7, nonstop. But here's a country close to the United States, not that far, Venezuela, you know, in the north part of South America, where that's descending into chaos. Uh, but, but, but not just chaos, it's descending into absolute authoritarianism, where the military is running the country where Maduro, who is the president of Venezuela, is becoming a complete totalitarian. He's always been an authoritarian. You know, the difference between authoritarianism and totalitarianism. Totalitarianism is, is they control every aspect of life, everything. You have no rights, nothing. Well, Venezuela is descending into that. People are starving. Literally, there's no food. Babies are dying. Even the New York Times uh, ran a story about that. So even they recognize the truth of that. Um but, but there's absolutely almost very little coverage. And, and to me, it's interesting. It's interesting what's going on in Venezuela. And we're going to go over some of the events that are happening there. Um, but And it's interesting, the attitude of the left to what is going on in Venezuela. And maybe one strong indicator, among many, many others, that the uh, media is completely leftist biased, or at least much of the media is, is the fact that they're not covering it. I, I, I pulled up a story. This is from May 31st, 2017. Where is it? I, you know, I, I, uh, it doesn't really say here where it is. Anyway, it's, it's, it's kind of a review of um, media coverage of uh, Venezuela's slide into uh, authoritarian nightmare. Uh, and it says, uh, you know, this is the opening, opening sentence of the story. Out of approximately 50,000 total evening news stories on ABC, CBS, and NBC, so they just talk, told, took those three as representative, combined in the last four years, 50,000 total evening news stories on ABC, CBS, NBC over four years, right? Just 25, 25 out of 50,000 have covered the ongoing crisis in Venezuela. This is according to the Media Research Center, right? So uh, after Hugo Chavez, the former president, former dictator of, uh, of Venezuela, passed away or you know, died in March 2013, the country spiraled into complete economic disaster, civil chaos, although it was already an economic disaster before Chavez died. But luckily for him, I guess, uh, it, it really got bad only after he died. Uh, you know, people are dying 
people are eating their cats and dogs. Uh, uh, somebody, I think I've said this on the show before, somebody I know who was vi visiting Caracas, the, the capital of Venezuela, told me that there are no cats and dogs in the streets because people have eaten them all. They've already broken into the zoos and uh, eaten all the animals in the zoos. And um, there's no coverage of this. There's almost no coverage of this. Right? 25 out of 50,000. You cover everything else, but, you know, nothing, right? Nothing. So why is it? Why is it? We're going to talk about that. But, but what I want to first, I want to talk about is, is what's happening right now in Venezuela, just to kind of bring you up to speed, given that the, the media is not covering this, not covering this the way it should be covered, not covering this to the extent that it should be covered. Uh, I'd like to just bring you up to speed and just some of the political developments. There was a attempted coup uh, in the last uh, couple of days, which was crushed by the military. Another question we should ask ourselves is why is the military supporting uh, this authoritarian and totalitarian? Uh, and why is the opposition, even though most uh, surveys show that the opposition uh, is dominant in Venezuela right now has, as a majority of the people. Why is it so impotent? Why is it struggling so badly? So those are good questions to hold in the back of your mind. Why is the opposition so bad? Why is the military supporting this regime? And why is the press in the United States not covering it? Why do we hear nothing from bleeding heart human rights advocates on the left about the situation in Venezuela? Why aren't there demonstrations in the streets? Why isn't there an encouragement for the uh, Trump administration to do something, at least in the sense of uh, political sanctions, which they've done a little bit of? But why, why, you know, why isn't there an, uh, an uprising uh, in the United States in terms of voices, even even Latin America voices, about doing something about this? Or, you know, I, I, God forbid we should militarily intervene. That that would be a disaster. But but. Why is there silence across the board? Relative silence. That's the question from everywhere. And why is the opposition so impotent? All right. So uh, just uh, today. So uh, 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 last week, um, there was a mock election in Venezuela to uh, elect a, um, a constitutional assembly. And a constitutional assembly has the power to overrule any decision of parliament, any decision of any government entity, to rewrite the constitution and basically act as the authoritarian leader of, uh, of the country. It can do anything it wants. It, 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 it is not beholden to anybody. And a, a constitutional assembly is usually appointed for a short period of time uh, this Constitutional Assembly just decided that it was going to uh, be around for, uh, for two years, uh, which is a long time for this kind of assembly traditionally in, in these kind of Latin American countries. Um, again, no human rights uh, um, uh, organization has condemned this or anything. Now, the, th this was held by an election. Uh, the Constitutional Assembly was, was voted in by an election. Uh, it, the, the government claims that 8 million people voted in this election. The interesting thing is the private company that provided the software and supervised this whole election uh, claims that it's complete sham, that it's complete fraud, that none of the election, uh, none of the election results are legitimate. Nobody cares. I mean, the Trump administration, I guess, cares a little bit. They've put some, a few, a few sanctions in Venezuela, but but you're not hearing again. This rampant fraud in election headline anyway. No, nobody cares. Uh, Maduro, who is the current president, uh, has complete control over this assembly. The assembly includes his wife and his son, a part of it. Uh, they have just assembly, and, and uh, as part of this assembly, and following the assembly, the Supreme Court have just fired the attorney general. Um, early on Saturday morning, early yesterday morning, they fired the attorney general. The attorney general was stood up to the president, which is funny because the attorney general used to be a huge supporter of this president and helped the president get the political power uh, that he has today. Uh, all of this is going on, right? Crushing of an uprising, uh, a constitutional, un unconstitutional constitutional assembly taking complete power over Venezuela, 
in a sense, granting that complete power to Maduro, the current dictator of Venezuela. Attorney General is being fired. If this happened in almost any other country, certainly if this was happening in what was perceived to be a right-leaning government, then, you know, uh, uh, the media would be all over this. So what's interesting here that I would argue is because Venezuela is perceived to be a socialist government, everybody's quiet, nobody's talking about it, nobody cares, and everybody is actually in support of this corrupt, dangerous, horrific regime. All right, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to the Iran Brooks Show on uh, the Blaze Radio Network. And when we come back, we'll continue our discussion of why, why, why socialism is never criticized. Venezuela is not criticized because it's the collapse of socialism. All right, we'll be back right after this break. Best You're clear. prolific media contributor, PhD in finance. This is the Yaron Brook Show, the Blaze Radio Network. Reform this with Sudi Jasser, the most free, the most humane. Society is a secular one, not that one that is against religion, not freedom from religion, but freedom of religion. That begins with the ability to criticize wholly, partially, whatever percent you want, the faith itself. Reform this on demand. Download episodes at theblaze.com slash radio. SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. The Jeff Fisher Show. We talked to Nigel Cameron. Uh, Will Robots Take Your Job. Fascinating. I mean, I've got a, a stack of just uh, homemade robots crack safe in just 30 minutes. Artificial intelligence, no longer just a sci-fi fantasy, says AT&T. A robot priest. Robot soccer tournaments. We'll be having sex with robots in the next 10 years. Some of us may be already doing that. Wait, let's say that out loud. The Jeff Fisher Show. Saturday mornings, 9 to noon Eastern. On the Blaze Radio Network. Attention, Zarelto and Pradaxa users. If you or a loved one has taken Zarelto or Pradaxa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Zarelto and Pradaxa are prescribed blood thinners used to prevent blood clots and protect people from strokes. If you have taken Zarelto or Pradaxa and been hospitalized for internal bleeding, call now. 800-630-6720. Serious bleeding has led to numerous cases of hospitalization and death. If you or a loved one was hospitalized for serious internal bleeding or a stroke after taking Zarelto or Pradaxa, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Call 800-630-6720. That's 800-630-6720. Again, 800-630-6720. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. InjuryHelpDesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. The IRS is the most feared agency in the world. You've heard ads from other companies offering to help taxpayers only if they owe over $10,000. Here at Platinum Tax Defenders, we're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and we're proud to be one of the only tax firms in the country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. So whether you owe just a few thousand dollars... Come back in one minute. ...thousands, call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we may even be able to reduce your tax debt down to a small fraction of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800-579-4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800-579-4967. 800 579 4967. The morning blaze. 30 seconds. 
Coming up in the next program, a discussion on the right to terminate your own life. Should you have that right? Plus, the Food Biz Pro Patrick Mosier will join us. We'll spotlight more American businesses with our Building America segments and even more confusion over gender and sexuality. Also, a story about contraband in our rural communities, stuff like plants. The Morning Blaze, weekday morning, 6 to 9 Eastern, on the Blaze Radio Network. You're listening to The Euron Brook Show. So one of the great tragedies about the situation in Venezuela is the fact that we're talking about a country that has the largest oil reserves in the world, more than Saudi Arabia. We're talking about a country that just 20 years ago was on a per capita basis the richest country in all of Latin America. We're talking about a country that has gone from the richest country in Latin America now to the poorest country in Latin America, in spite of the fact that they have natural resources Immense natural resources. Again, more oil than Saudi Arabia. But it's not just oil. They have fertile land. And yet right now they can't produce enough food to feed themselves. They have other types of natural resources. And yet it doesn't matter. They are crushed. They've been crushed by two socialist administrations, by the administration of Hugo Chavez and now Maduro. And, and what did socialism do? How can socialism destroy this? I mean, are you, you blaming socialism for this? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It is the socialist policies in Venezuela of Hugo Chavez and of Maduro that turn Venezuela from the richest country in the world, in, in Latin America, to the poorest country in Latin America. It is their policies of taking private land, private agricultural corporation, private uh, private uh, agricultural businesses and nationalizing them and stealing their land and stealing their factories. It's the Chavez and Maduro governments that instituted the policies of socialism, of redistribution of wealth, of not investing in the oil extraction so that even though they have oil reserves, they can't get them because they don't have the capital to invest because they blew all the money. I don't know how much Chavez died within the bank account in Switzerland. Redistributed wealth, that's all gone. It's disappeared. Destroyed whatever elements of capital investment they were in, in, in Venezuela. And this is what happens when you take a country that's relatively rich, which Venezuela was. And, he, and, and granted, Venezuela was never a capitalist. It was never free. So you had a lot of poor people who didn't have to be poor. If the country had been capitalist, if the reforms had been instituted, had been capitalist reforms, then what would you've got is a redistribution of wealth through the market processes to from those who are less productive to those who are more productive. And actually, the poor would have been risen up and become much better off in Venezuela. That's the pattern in in. in every successful country in history. The poor get better not because of redistribution of wealth. The poor get better because they get jobs, because their productivity rises, and therefore their wages rises, and therefore they can afford more and more and more stuff. And that's what defines their exit from poverty, is that they can afford not just food, but now they can afford housing, and they can afford technology, and they can afford a good life. That can only be achieved. That can only be achieved with freedom, with, with free markets to produce, to consume, to employ, to fire. You need the flexibility of free markets in order to allow for the poor to rise up from poverty. But what is the solution in Venezuela? What is the solution everywhere? What's the solution here in the United States to poverty? It's the war on poverty. It's let's take money from some people and give it to others, and we've solved the problem. Then how come we still have poor people in America? How come we still have a war on poverty going on? Why wasn't the problem solved in the 60s and 70s? Because redistribution of wealth never solves the problem of poverty. It never solves the problem of poverty. It makes it 
potentially worse. And certainly in Venezuela, it made it worse. Now, for a while, Venezuela had a lot of money. Cubans, uh, they were, had so much money, they were helping Cuba. They were sending gazillions of dollars to Cuba. But they also had a lot of money from oil. And they had a lot of money from taxing and taking money from property from the, from the wealthy. And they redistributed it. And for a while, that raises the standard of living of the poor. But at some point, that money runs out. At some point, oil prices go down. At some point, if you're not a greedy capitalist and reinvesting your profits into the industry, like the oil industry, into technology, your you know your uh, um, infrastructure that pumps out the oil decays, gets destroyed, and disappears. At some point, at some point, there's no more money to redistribute, and at that point. People become poorer and poorer and poorer because the poor who got that money didn't invest it. They didn't save it. They consumed it. And the wealthy who were businessmen primarily, all their money was taken away. So they didn't invest it. So they didn't grow their businesses. The oil industry is dying, dead. Where's the money going to come from to keep redistributing to people? It doesn't exist. It's not there. Now, what's fascinating, in addition to this, is that in 1973, the poorest country in Latin America, Chile, abandoned its short-lived experiment with socialism. And it didn't quite embrace capitalism until uh, the, the early 1980s, but, but in the early 1980s, it actually embraced elements of capitalism, significant elements of capitalism, making it the freest economy of, uh, of Latin America. Well, in 1973, Chilean income was 36% of that of Venezuela. Today, Chileans are 51% richer than Venezuelans. Indeed, Chileans, their income has risen 228% during that period. Venezuelans became 21% poorer during that period, 1973. And yet, and yet, now, I'm not an apologist for the regime who made this switch in Chile. Right. Because, you know, I'm getting old and, and uh, names of people just escape, uh, escape my, uh, my, meager, my meager brain. But um, the Chilean dictator was an awful human being, a violator of individual rights, killed a lot of people, did not believe in free speech, did not believe in freedom. And yet he has attacked viciously, constantly, justifiably. But at the same time, he brought about economic prosperity in Chile. Pinochet was his name, right? General Pinochet. He also transitioned Chile from his authoritarian regime to a what today is one of the freest governments in Latin America, probably in the world. So he actually peacefully transitioned. On the other hand, you have in Venezuela an authoritarian, equal in their brutality to Pinochet, and impoverishing his own people, and they get a free ride. All right, we're going to have to take a, a, a break in a few seconds here. Uh, you're listening to your Ron Brook show. Um, why is it? Why is it that Ten. Pinochet got such a bad rap and that, that, that Maduro and Chavez are scot-free? Five. We'll be right back after this break to give you the answer. You're right. clear. On the Blaze Radio Network. Podcasts that relate to your life. You know, on the Planned Parenthood thing, we're going to hear, oh, but you know, they tried to defund Planned Parenthood when they put an amendment on the health care bill. Oh, you mean the amendment that would partially defund Planned Parenthood for 12 months? which was attached to a doomed bill and which would have likely been removed anyway. That one? Oh, okay. Heroic. Check out Matt Walsh at theblaze.com slash radio, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. 
lead non-attorney spokesperson, Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with Principal Office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto and Prodexa users. If you or a loved one has taken the blood-thinning drugs Zarelto or Prodexa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. Zarelto and Prodexa have been linked to internal bleeding, strokes, and pulmonary embolisms. If you or a loved one has taken these blood-thinning drugs and have been hospitalized for internal bleeding, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Lines are open 24-7. Call 800-553-4751. That's 800-553-4751. 800-553-4751. You could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. 800-294-1788. They've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. If you're struggling with credit card debt, Consolidated Credit Credit programs will teach you how to get out and stay out of debt. Call 800-294-1788. 800-294-1788. That's 800-294-1788. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services or by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM80031. Services are primarily educational in nature. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-803-6951. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one advice from local... Come back in one minute. ...and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-803-6951. That's 1-800-803-6951. Pure Opelka with Mike Opelka. Starting Monday at noon Eastern, of course, we are going to review the biggest movie of the summer, Sharknado 5, Global Swarming. I wish Al Gore had been in there and one of those big old sharks had chomped him up and then said, no more, you're done. And we'll tell you about some jobs that have just popped up because Donald Trump is president. And they're kind of strange. Be here. Pure Opelka on the Blaze Radio Network. So we're talking about Venezuela today, uh, a country that used to be the richest country in Latin America today, the poorest. People are starving. Uh, the, the government there is taking over complete control over the economy, over the lives of people. 
It's becoming absolutist. It's becoming totalitarian. And yet, very little from our media, very little coverage. Nobody accuses. I, I haven't seen any celebrity go out there on television and, and complain about what's going on in Venezuela. We compared it a little bit to Chile. And, um, and the fact that when, uh, you know, if, if, when Pinochet was running Chile, oh, celebrities were constantly attacking him, constantly berating him. Now, again, I, 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 he, was, he was bad on many, many fronts. But note the contrast. If you're an authoritarian on the left, you can get away with murder. An authoritarian on the right can't do anything. And, and when an authoritarian on the right does something good, like free up the Chilean economy, as uh, Pinochet did, that creates incredible wealth, and ultimately you walk away from your authoritarian position and you allow for elections and you allow for real freedom, you're still hounded and you're still prosecuted and you're still condemned and you're still hated. But you, when you're Hugo Chavez, when you're a leftist, and you basically destroy your country and you imprison and kill your political opponents. You get a free ride. You're considered a hero. A hero. Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky, one of Pinochet's biggest critics, of course, is one of uh, Hugo Chavez's his biggest apologists. He loves what Hugo Chavez did. He, he, you know, he, he brought 80% of his people out of poverty. Really? Really? You know, go, go, go look at Venezuela right now. Sure, you can take other people's money, redistribute it for a little while, and pretend that people are out of poverty. Not because they have jobs, but they got free money. Right? Now, remember, Noam Chomsky is on a, also an apologist for the Khmer Rouge, the Sandinistas, Mao Zedong. And if he'd been a little younger, he would have been an apologist for Stalin. And, of course, this brings up a much bigger question. Not only aren't we critical of Venezuela, but really, how many movies have you seen outlining and detailing the evils of communism, of, of the, the slaughter of innocence that Stalin and Lenin and, and Mao Zedong engaged in, that tens of millions of people that were killed? How many intellectuals, how many intellectuals, particularly on the left, have condemned communism as evil and barbaric? as a murderous ideology. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we should condemn Nazism, but for every, for, for every anti-communist movie, there are a thousand anti-Nazi movies. Why? Why can't we condemn communism? It should be easy. They only killed 100 to 200 million people. Why don't, why don't we condemn the Khmer Rouge? Indeed, there are people from the Khmer Rouge who are in the government in Cambodia today. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's as if Nazis were part of the German government today. Nobody cares. You know, for, for forever, the left was ap apologized, justified, covered for the crimes, crimes as an understatement of Joseph Stalin, of his reign of terror, of the brutality of communism. And now they're doing the same thing for Hugo Chavez and Maduro in Venezuela. Sean Penn. Oliver Stone, Michael Moore, I've uh, got some others, uh, you know, uh, Sean Penn is uh, Antonio Bandaras, you know, love the fact that, that Chavez seized private business as a, it should be a model to be emulated across the world. Antonio Bandaras said that. Oliver Stone considered Chavez a great hero. Sean Penn, champion of the world's poor. Jesse Mason well-known well journalist in the Rolling Stones. Very cool, very cool columnist. Actually, Jesse Masson, I think that's a Jesse Masson. I think I debated him on Stasso once. He's, he's, he's the avowed communist. How can they be avowed communists who gain any kind of respect, who have a column in the Rolling Stones? I mean, if you were an avowed Nazi, you wouldn't have a column in the Rolling Stones, but an avowed communist can get a, a column in the Rolling Stones. How can that be? How is that possible? Communists, they killed over 100 million people. Well, you know, he called the economic programs of uh, Chavez and Maduro basically terrific. Uh, Mason insisted 
that Venezuela's electoral system, full of fraud, full of corruption, completely rigged. He says the electoral system's integrity puts the U.S. to adjunct shame. Really? Now, this is at the same time, same period, where the opposition leaders in Venezuela are being hauled off in the middle of the night to prison. And yet, they get a free pass, these people. They're all, they're all apologists for Maduro and Chavez and socialism and communism. And it doesn't matter how many people communism kills. It doesn't matter how many people die of starvation because of socialism. It doesn't matter how many babies don't have enough food in Venezuela and they're dying. They will still back their hero Chavez and their hero Maduro. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. Certainly in our media, nobody cares. You get a few, you know, there's an article in Reason and John Stossel has done a story about this and, and a few people here and there. But nothing. Silence. Silence is a great country, a formerly rich country, a beautiful country. Uh, in the past, an incredibly productive country just sinks into the gutters. And even opposition in Venezuela... Why is there no revolution? Why isn't there armed rebellion? What are they doing? What are they hoping for? Well, it turns out one of the problems is that the opposition is completely splintered. They disagree about everything. They don't agree about anything. And uh, they can't get their act together. So revolution, phew. That is uh, far too much to ask from them. All right. I'm curious if you have any thoughts on why. I, 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 this is my question. Why can they get away with it? Why can the left basically get away with murder? What is it about what the left stands for? What is it about what they represent? What is it about the world in which we live that allows the left to advocate for evil, evil, and get away with it. All right. 888 sorry. 888 900 I'm curious what you think. And if anybody out there is actually from Venezuela, it would be great to hear from you. If anybody out there uh, has relatives in Venezuela or, 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 or has a personal story about what's going on there, I'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, if any of you actually think what is happening in Venezuela is a good thing. If you're a Chavez fan, Please call 888-900-3393. Curious, why do you think these people can get away with it? And when we get back, we're going to talk about why I think they get away with it, why I think they've been getting away with it for 50, 60, 70 years, and what we need to do, what we need to do to change that, and why fundamentally the opposition in Venezuela is impotent. All right, you're listening to Iran Book Show on the Blaze Radio Network. We'll be right back after this break. Israeli You're clear. and radical for capitalism. It's the Iran Book Show on the Blaze Radio Network. Podcasts that take on the issues of the day. And those countries are dominated. And what allows them to perpetuate the jihadist mentality is the sense that the state's identity is Islam. And as long as the state's identity is Islamic, from that will flow the idea that the state's law should be Sharia-based, that Sharia is not only a source, but the source of law. Check out Reform This at theblaze.com slash radio, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Paid law attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm, with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. 
Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then call Page Publishing at 800-733-9813. Immediately, that's 800-733-9813. Page Publishing is looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review each and every book submitted to them and give you their feedback. If they like what they read, they'll get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, Barnes & Noble, and other outlets. They handle everything, editing, cover design, copyright protection, printing, publicity, and distribution. So if you've written a novel, children's book, cookbook, inspirational work, poetry, or a biography and want to get it published, then you need to call Page Publishing and do it immediately. Call 800-733-9813 now for your free author submission kit. Again, for your free author submission kit, call 800-733-9813. That's 800-733-9813. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. Call Page Publishing at 800-733-9813 for your free author submission kit. Monday through Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. What evidence did they have? Join Glenn and his team. Is there anybody here that thinks government gets it right that often? Inside the think tank. What they're not saying is, look, there was a warrant that targeted something within Trump Tower. We don't trust the intelligence community, and I think that's a disturbing thought. As they connect the dots on the news of the day. His connection is one degree separation from Vladimir Putin. Think tank. Monday through Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on The Blaze TV non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. 800-899-8443. That's 800-899-8443. The IRS is the most feared agency in the world. You've heard ads from other companies offering to help taxpayers only if they owe over $10,000. Here at Platinum Tax Defenders, we're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. You've got to call. One of the only tax firms in the country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. So whether you owe... I'll come back in a minute. ...or hundreds of thousands... Call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we may even be able to reduce your tax debt down to a small fraction of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800-579-4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800-579-4967. 800-579-4967. America Now with Buck Sexton. On the left, Democrats, liberals, tearing down America is like their national pastime. They love that. Every night, Buck is in the Freedom Hut. Welcome to the Freedom Hut. Breaking down the important issues. Class anxiety, though, is the defining characteristic of the American experience. America Now with Buck Sexton. Some Democrats I know are very patriotic. Look, it's a radio show. I'm having a little fun, everybody. Let's not get too crazy. 7 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. So we're talking about Venezuela today and uh, the fact that it's getting almost no coverage in spite of the fact that it is a country spiraling into authoritarianism, totalitarianism, has been for many, many, many years. And yet nobody cares. Nobody seems to care. And many, many in our media and on the left are apologists for the current regime. Indeed, in uh, ABC's World News Tonight, has not mentioned the word socialism or socialist once in connection with Venezuela since Chavez died in 2013. Here's in a country imploding because of socialism, and our media will not identify it as such. Unbelievable. 
All right, we got Kenneth on the line, who uh, I'm not sure what he was, something about right versus left. Hey, Kenneth, how's it going? Great. How are you doing, Dr. Brooke? I'm good. I'm good. So what so do you think this is? About, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, wh why is the left getting away with it? I think it's because the left buys into the moral premise that all the socialist experiments uh, have at their root, which is that if there's inequality, material inequality between people, then some kind of injustice must have occurred, right? That's right. So, you know, naturally, even if the experiment results in great destruction or, you know, creates more damage than it does good, if the motives are pure, they don't feel morally compelled to condemn it. And I think it's kind of embarrassing for them. And well, I wish it was embarrassing for them because honesty than they have. Because maybe if it was embarrassing for him, maybe maybe young people wouldn't be so attracted to them. But but the young people are attracted to their message in spite of the fact that it should be embarrassing. They they should be hiding. They should be under their academic desks. They should be off of television. Nobody should ever listen to Wood, uh, uh, Sean Penn, or or, or or what's his name Moore or. or or any of these celebrities ever say again. And yet we constantly go back to them for more and more insight into this. And I think, so I think it's much worse than what you're saying. I think you're absolutely right. The, the bottom line is that the left in this country has the moral high ground and the right has abandoned that, yeah. the moral high ground yeah. a long, long time ago. And because of that, the right is afraid to criticize the left and doesn't really stand up to the left. And the left can't criticize their own failed experiments because if they did, that would reveal the true nature of what they stand for. See, I think the myth of equity is just, it really resonates with people. Yeah. And it has for thousands of years. And that's yeah. just, it's something that it's really intoxicating. And it's yeah. just something we can't get over psychologically, I think. And young well, people, you know, you say, like, why don't they, why don't they clue up? Well, young people are stupid, you're on. Um, you know, well, they have, they, I, you know, I was young. You were young once. I don't know. I mean, we were somewhat stupid. But, but it's not that they're stupid. It's that they take seriously what, too seriously, what the professors teach them. It's that they, that they, they tolerate it. But it's also because they've been indoctrinated by certain moral high ground. And they have accepted them all, high ground. So uh, thanks, Ke uh, Kenneth. You, you, you've set me on the right path. I, I appreciate the call. Uh, look, what is that moral high ground? That moral high ground basically says that your life is not yours. That moral high ground basically says that the group is more important than the individual. That moral high ground basically says that it's okay to sacrifice some people. Indeed, it is mandatory to sacrifice some people for the sake of other people. After all, isn't sacrifice wonderful and noble and good the moral high ground is that being self-interested is evil, it's bad. And that being caring and sacrificing for the greater good of whatever is good and noble. And as you said, Kenneth, the moral high ground is that equality of outcome in one way or another, or as conservatives like to say it, equality of opportunity, as if, they, as if there's a difference between equality of outcome and equality of opportunity. We're still going to steal stuff from some people and give it to others. That's all good. That's all good. And that's noble. And that's just. And yeah, and some people have to suffer as a consequence. So what? So, so the capitalists get their money taken away from them. So what? It's for greater good. It's for, it's for the common good. It's for the public interest. And until we are willing to criticize the morality of altruism that lays at the core of this, the morality of altruism that says that your moral responsibility in life is the sacrifice for those who don't have any. Your moral responsibility in life is to, 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 to take care of the needs of those who need something that you might have. As long as we hold the morality of altruism as our standard for morality, socialism wins over and over and over again. And, you know, it's a good morality. It just, it's not applied right. You know, so they try it with communism and 100, 100 million people die. They try it in Venezuelans. They just are not getting it right. But look, it, it, the morality is a good morality. We just have to find the right political vehicle for it. Two minutes. No. The morality is evil. The morality is wrong. The right moral code is a moral code on which implicitly the United States of America was founded. The moral code that is implicit in capitalism. And that is the moral code that says that you, your moral responsibility is to take care of your own life.
to make the most of your own life. To be self-interested in a rational, long-term sense. That moral code would not tolerate socialism. You don't tell me how to live and what to do. You can't take my money. I produced it. I created it. But you see, nobody on the right has the guts to stand up to the socialists because we bought into them all code. One minute. And why doesn't the opposition rise up in Venezuela? Because they're socialists, it turns out. They're just a different brand of socialist. They're socialist light. If we were centrally planning the economy, it would be a lot better. Or at least a significant portion of them are socialists. And when the demonstrators are, are interviewed in Venezuela and Caracas, they all claim to be socialists too. Just a different brand of socialism. Socialism is evil. It's thoroughly evil. From beginning to end, there is no good socialist. There is no good socialism. There is no moderate socialism. It's an it's a ideology that leads to death and destruction, which is what the morality of altruism necessitates. 20. Your life is yours. Nobody else's. Live it. Live it. Live it. And don't let other people tell you how to. Don't let other people force themselves on you. Ten. All right. You're listening to the only radio show where you'll hear this stuff. The Five. Iran Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network. We will be back. You're clear. Listening to the Yaron Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network. If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. While glamping with the youngins, while second guessing your decisions, while plotting world domination. Pretty much any time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. This is the Jeff Fisher Show on the Blaze Radio Network. Podcasts. We all have different interests. We have different values. We have different ideas. And on-demand programming. You were doing awesome <laughs> grunt work because our tractor was in the shop. All at theblaze.com slash radio. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Build or replace transmission, $3,200. Anti-lock brake system, $1,000. Rebuild or replace engine, $2,400. Truth is, once your manufacturer's warranty runs out, it's all on you. Every last cent. Get protection for covered repairs with a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty. Unlike other companies, with Toco, there's no down payment, and the monthly payments are really affordable. Not sure how long you're keeping your car? At Toco, you can pay as you go. Keep your hard-earned cash and call Toco Warranty right now at 800 800- 219 to save big money on covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle, but for about the cost of a tank of gas per month, a TOCO plan has your back on expensive covered car repairs. Monthly payments are very affordable. Get your free quote now. Call TOCO at 800-219-6614. That's 800-219-6614. 800-219-6614. Cancellation fee may apply. Subject to eligibility. Not available in Missouri and Washington. Waiting period and deductible apply. Coverage provided and administered by Warrantech Corporation or its affiliates. Not affiliated with any manufacturer or dealership. Visit TOCOWarranty.com for complete terms and conditions. This is a national health alert from the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one has diabetes, now, regardless of your age, if you have insurance, you may qualify to receive diabetic testing supplies with little to no out-of-pocket cost. If you call right now, you could get a free meter upgrade. In addition, we'll give you a free pedometer as our special gift to you. Call now. Call the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline now at 800-483-6631. 800-483-6631. The Jeff Fisher Show. The next Mega Millions drawing will be $346 million. The uh, Powerball estimated at about $286 million. So listen, I love you. You know that, right? But if I happen to hit that and you tune in next Saturday and you hear... And you'll say to yourself, he won. And you can count on me taking the cash payout. The Jeff Fisher Show. Saturday mornings, 9 to noon Eastern. On the Blaze Radio Network. This is the Blaze Radio Network. Truth lives here. 
the latest time, AP Herald. One Republican and one Democratic governor are joining to try to fix a health care system upon which Congress to date has failed to act. Ohio Republican Governor John Kasich tells CBS's Face the Nation the American people want functionality. If you have a good spirit and you understand that the system is beginning to melt down on the exchange side, jeopardizing health care for many, many Americans, I'm hopeful we can get there. Kasich says that if you don't worry about which party or which politician gets the credit, it can work. Colorado Democratic Governor John Hickenlooper wants a bipartisan group that can look to best deal with insurance pools while looking for ways to stabilize private markets. A high official within the Department of Justice tells Fox News Sunday that President Trump is above board with his directives. I can assure you that we are going to do the right thing and follow the rule of law. Deputy Attorney General Ron Rosenstein says President Trump is not singling out anybody for political reasons. The president has not uh, directed us to investigate particular people. That wouldn't be right. That's not the way we operate. Trump suggested last week during a rally in West Virginia that the feds investigate Hillary Clinton rather than his presidential campaign and alleged ties with Russia. Rather than blame Congress for poor relations with Russia, Senator Tom Cotton tells CBS's Face the Nation that he blames its leader. We have some overlapping interests. It would be better if our relationship was better, but our relationship is not good right now because of Vladimir Putin. Cotton says relations with the Russians are at a low not seen in many years, and he's especially critical of Russian tactics. Russia uses its money and its intelligence services to spread disinformation, use subterfuge and deception and manipulation to try to divide political opinion within the United States. Cotton adds that when at all cost, Machiavellian statecraft is nothing new to the land of czars, communists and oligarchs. That's one of uh, the techniques that Russia has used for decades during the Cold War and during the Putin era. Twenty-six people are recovering from injuries after a powerful storm system ripped through Tulsa, Oklahoma overnight. That's the latest. I'm A.P. Herald. Direct from the historic newsreels of... Selznick Talking Pictures. In cooperation with the International Broadcast Museum of East Sheboygan, this is a 30-second biography. Few people know that the beautiful Darrow Hannah was almost named Darrow Hannah Barbera because of the doink, doink, doink noise that was made when her parents pushed at her soft spot when she was a baby. The star of the big screen and mugshots across the country starred in such classics as Blade Runner, Splash, Steel Magnolias, and as the one-eyed assassin in Kill Bill. In 2013, she revealed when she was a child, medical professionals recommended that she be institutionalized and medicated, which explains her dating Neil Young. This has been a 30-second biography brought to you by the Blaze Radio Network. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with Principal Office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Direct from the historic newsreels of Selznick Talking Pictures In cooperation with the International Broadcast Museum of East Sheboygan This is a 30 second biography Bill Clinton's brother from another mother and member of the English Parliament The Funkadelic singer George Clinton was famous for putting nanoparticles of quantum physics into modern dance music with such super hits as Atomic Dog, Spooky Action at a Distance, and Schrodinger's Cat, which won for Best R&B Single in 1983 and was later re-released as General Tsao's Chicken in your grocer's freezer. George Clinton was once rumored to have solved Einstein's unified field theory but couldn't read his handwriting the next morning when he sobered up. It was at that point that George decided to give up the funk. This has been a 30-second biography brought to you by the Blaze Radio Network. If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. While shopping for a mail-order bride, while riding in an Uber, while passing on the gluten, Pretty much any time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. I don't care about your defined gender role. Podcasts. This is the Morning Blaze. And on-demand programming. Hello and welcome to ILTV's Zion News on the Blaze Radio Network. All at theblaze.com.
Come back in one minute. All right. Non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto and Prodexa users. If you or a loved one has taken the blood thinning drugs Zarelto or Prodexa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. Zarelto and Prodexa have been linked to internal bleeding, strokes, and pulmonary embolisms. If you or a loved one has taken these blood thinning drugs and have been hospitalized for internal bleeding, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Lines are open 24-7. Call 800-553-4751. That's 800-553-4751. 800-553-4751. You could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. Welcome to a discussion of radical fundamental principles of freedom, rational self-interest, laissez-faire capitalism, and individual... Dropped. The Yaron Brooks Show starts now. All right, we're talking about Venezuela. I have me talking about Venezuela. I want to get to a different topic in a little while, but I think the important thing to note here is that the morality of altruism, which is what we talked about in the previous segment, the morality of socialism, the morality that says your moral responsibility is to take care of those in need. Your moral responsibility is to sacrifice for the poor. Your moral responsibility is to help whoever needs help. And the state is there just to help you out. It's to encourage you. It's to redistribute some of your wealth. And that the moral ideal in the utopia of the future, in some theoretical way, the, 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 the ideal is equality, equality of outcome, equality of opportunity, some equality, not equality before the law, not political equality. That would be too founding fathers like that would be too rational. No, equality of actual outcome. All of that is consistent with socialism. And the right cannot defeat the left, will not defeat the left as long as it holds this morality. And of course, it does hold this morality. The right agrees with the left on the goal. The right agrees with the left on the moral code. It might disagree a little bit on the means, but just a little bit. It's like the opposition of Venezuela. They agree with Maduro and Chavez about the goals, even about the ideology. It uh, means they think they're a little too harsh. I just, uh, during the break, there was a news story by John Kasich about John Kasich and, and Democratic governors they want to get together to, to, to fix our healthcare system. And what's the standard? The standard is universal health care, equal health care for everybody. The standard is that a Republican, so called on the right, wants to impose on us is some form of socialism. And uh, one of the things is they, they said they want to stabilize private markets. You know how you stabilize private markets? Actually, why would you want to stabilize private markets? Isn't one of the beauties of private markets is that they're not stable? They keep changing. They keep innovating. They keep lowering prices. But if you want to stabilize them in their terms, get out of the way. Low regulations. But these Republicans are just like Democrats. And we'll get, we'll get in a minute to more central planning Republicans uh, in, in a little while. The right cannot defeat the left. The right cannot defeat the left as long as the right holds the same fundamental ideas as the left and they do and this includes trump and bannon and Kasich and mccain and ryan and all of them we need a new opposition party in this country we need the opposition party of the founders we need the opposition party of the individualists we need to reject collectivism and everything that's involved in it and until you have a real opposition party and Venezuela needs this. It needs an opposition party of capitalists, of individualists, of self-interested individuals who want to pursue, God forbid, happiness, their happiness. So it's time, it's time, it's time. It's time to get rid of these Republicans, get rid of these Democrats, and replace them with real opposition. There's no difference right now between uh, uh, Trump and, and Obama. It's, it's, it's little... Little, little stuff, but at the fundamental, no difference. Sorry, I know a lot of Trump fans, they hate my guts, but okay. 
All right, we got Al on the line who wants to talk more about socialism. Hey, Al. Hey, how's it going, your own? I'm I'm doing well. A little little excited today, but that's good. Yeah. I think makes uh, good radio. I, I think one of the biggest problems, you know, especially for the younger generation, you know, because they don't know any better. The older people who are teaching should know better, but they keep being told that fascism and Nazis are this far right ideology, and you know, the left is the communism and socialism. You know, it's like they they somehow don't realize that you know Nazi states were national socialists. You know, and so they, they, they associate with the far right. And it's like the only thing further left than Nazi is, is the communists, you know. Yep. And, yep. and you're, well, you're but, absolutely right about the fact that, you know, on the right, the Republicans can't fight this because, you know, my local senator just posted something on his Facebook page there. They talked about trying to develop a, you know, a politics of service and sacrifice. Oh, my versus, God. <laughs> versus uh, partisanship and egotism, and it's like, and I, I posted on the rock people put, said that I'm like, and this is why the Democrats keep pushing this country further left because you have this idea of service and sacrifice, it's, you know. No, you're absolutely right, Al, and that's right. The, the right is just as guilty here. The service and sacrifice only plays right into the hands of the left, right into the hands of socialism. That is exactly the language that needs to be, or the ideas that need to be abandoned. The whole idea of the sacrifice of the individual for the group. The whole vocabulary, the public interest, the common good has to be abolished on the right. And, and in this sense, I've said this before, I don't buy into right-left anymore. The only interesting, the only meaningful political spectrum is a political spectrum from individualism to collectivism. And individualism equals capitalism, collectivism equals socialism, communism, Nazism, uh, all forms of authoritarianism. They're all on the same side. Call it left, call it right. It doesn't matter what we call it left or right. Those are confusing terms today. The way to think about it is um, individualism versus collectivism. And the nice thing about individualism versus collectivism is it goes deeper than just political terms. It goes to the moral essence it goes to the philosophical essence a collectivist believes that that it's okay to sacrifice the individual for the sake of the collective the public the 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 good of the country or whatever and that collective could be a so-called right-wing collective fascism the country or the blood or the race or it could be a left-wing collective uh the proletarian the poor you know fill in the blank but the essential is the same. Individual doesn't matter. What matters is the group, and we're going to sacrifice as many individuals as many times for the sake of the group as possible. And that is the essence of both left and right. That's the essence of Bannon and Chavez. And, and what, another thing against me is that these religious people think that they're opposed to the, the socialists and everything. On, on, you know, and it's like yeah, yeah. So let's is, let's sacrifice individuals. Not for the state or not for the proletarian. Let's sacrifice individuals to God or let's sacrifice individuals to the church or let's sacrifice individuals to some other good cause that they believe in. And no, I say. And the founders of this country said no. They said no, individuals, on end in themselves, you don't get to sacrifice anybody for anything. We are free. We have a right to our own life, a right to our own liberty, and a right to pursue our own happiness. That is the essential of what made this country great. And it's essential of what we're losing. It's essential of what Republicans and Democrats have lost. And if you take a second to read the Communist Manifesto, Marx says in there that all these religious ideals that these people have been preached to all their lives, you know, are the very foundation of, of Marxism. It so easy for them to be converted to, to communists. Absolutely, it's the same Absolutely. ideals. My view is that communism people. is just secularized, a certain version. It secularized a certain version of Christianity, and it's, it, Christianity softens people up in the sense that they are willing to commit the sacrifice, they are willing to place the well-being of the collective above the well-being of the individual, and then communism sweeps in and says, okay, let's take this seriously, let's actually do it, here's how we do it, and, and it takes advantage of their economic insecurities and the lack of answers that religion can provide them and provides them with answers. But it's the same kind of collectivistic views. And, and we're right. not going to win the battle. We're not going to win the battle for freedom, for liberty, for capitalism, unless we advocate consistently for individualism. And individualism right. requires a philosophical foundation. 
in, in rational egoism, and rational egoism requires a philosophical foundation for reason. Reason as man's basic means of survival. Reason is how we learn about the world, not revelation, but the use of our senses and the use of our mind. All right. Thanks, Al. Really appreciate the call. Uh, you're, you're spot on. I agree with you completely, and which, which is pretty rare in this world. Almost nobody agrees with me completely. Um, it, you know, so, so Venezuela is, is, is deteriorating, is almost gone. Um, it, it, it's authoritarian, totalitarian. Nobody cares. Nobody cares because they're all socialists. They're all collectivists. Nobody talks about it because it's more proof that their ideal, their socialist ideal is destructive. You know, uh, Bernie Sanders is never going to raise this because he wants socialism and he ran for so uh, socialism. And no professor is going to raise this because then what would he tell the kids? What would he tell his students when he's been teaching them the ideal, the, the, the beauty of socialism? And here's an example of it failing and collapsing and being destroyed. Right. And, and all I would say is my sympathies are with the Venezuelan people. I wish you had better ideas. I wish you had a better foundation for liberty. I think it's time to pick up arms and to go into uh, into into revolution uh, when the, your government becomes as authoritarian, when it steals elections, when free speech is denied of you. It is the time for revolution, but the right revolution. Look at the founding principles of America. Look at the Declaration of Independence. That's what should inspire you, not a softer form of socialism. All right, when we come back, I want to talk about the Trump administration's new immigration policy. I want to talk about, um, is that more central planning? What do you think about, what do you think about the immigration policy that we just heard from Trump? And um, all right, and, and if we have time, there's some Bannon stories uh, or Bannon rumors that I'd like uh, to discuss as well. Okay, you're listening to the Ron Book Show on Block Talk Radio. <laughs> the Blaze Radio Network. We will be right back after this break. Mr. Clear. Author. Hey, you're on. Can you turn your gain down a little bit? You're coming a little hot. On Brook Show. Sorry. The Blaze Radio Network. Okay, I'm going to yell now. Tell me if that's on. All right, you're listening to your on Brook. That sounds okay. Okay. Thank you. Do you love all things Glenn Beck? Would you like to know what's always happening in the world of Glenn? Get the inside scoop by signing up for the free Glenn Beck newsletter. You'll get Glenn's take on the news of the day, show recaps, exclusive videos, special offers, and much more. Get Glenn Beck delivered straight to your inbox. Visit glennbeck.com slash newsletter and sign up today. That's glennbeck.com slash newsletter. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with Principal Office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Attention, this is a public notice from Citizens Disability. If you are one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits from Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, Citizens Disability can help. You'll be given an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, and deal with Social Security. Best of all, there is no fee until you receive your benefits. We only get paid if you win your case. To get started with your free no-obligation consultation, call 800-504-1636. That's 800-504-1636. There are a vast number of conditions that can make you eligible for disability benefits, many that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call Citizens Disability today. Again, that's 800 504 1636. 800 504 1636. That's Citizens Disability. 800 504 1636. Connect to the Blaze Radio Network every Sunday for a full lineup. Jackie Daly kicks it off at 6 a.m. Eastern. Then at 8, it's Wall Builders Live. Handle on the Law at 11. The Yaron Brook Show at 2. And at 4, it's Gun Talk. You know, a gun is the ultimate remote control. You press the button here and something happens over there. That's why a lot of us guys really like our, our guns. After that at 7, it's Hollywood 360. 
All day entertainment every Sunday on the Blaze Radio Network at theblaze.com slash radio. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. Come back in 30. Sato Show. I've got to be honest with you, which makes me tend to believe that those who are leaking are children. Damage other world leaders, America's ability to conduct foreign policy just to take down Donald Trump, that they would do that. Short-sighted children. So these leaks are dangerous. These leaks are far-reaching beyond the Trump administration. The Chris Salcedo Show, weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. You're listening to The Iran Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network. All right, so let's go from the evils of socialism to the ever-controversial number one topic that people hate me for, and that is immigration. I, I think it's the same issue, but at the end of the day, the question is, are you an individualist or are you a collectivist? And I find almost all of the people who are anti-immigration to be collectivist of one form or another. Most of them hide it well, but they're all collectivist. But let's take this latest bi- this latest proposal. It's not a bill, and it probably won't pass. But since Trump made such a big deal out of it, and he backed it and everything, it's a, it's a bill proposed by Republican Senator, I think Cotton and, and a congressman, to uh, uh, re- uh, revise, if you will, our uh, legal immigration system. Now, let me say right off the bat, I think our legal immigration system needs revision. It needs to be scrapped. It needs to start over. It's a complete and utter disaster. And some of the problems in our Im- current immigration system, some of our problems in the current immigration system, are addressed in this bill. So uh, some of this family unification, the emphasis on family unification, I, I think that's, that is, should not be an emph- thing to emphasize in, um, in an immigra- legal immigration bill. Uh, so, uh, so the fact that today uh, most immigrants who come to this country, legal immigrants who come to this country, come for family u- reunification, to me, I- I- is not justifiable. It's also way, way, way too difficult for anybody with skill, but more importantly, any kind of skill, not just high quality, and skill, any kind of skill. For anybody with skill or anybody with a true desire to work at any job, it's way, way, way too difficult for them to get into this country. So what does this bill do? It shrinks the number of legal immigrants from a million a year to half a million a year within, I think, four or five years. It, instead of expanding the work visa program, the H-1B green card visa programs, it keeps them static to shrink them. It does away with a lot of the family stuff. I'm, I'm okay with that. But instead of using that as an opportunity to expand the number of people coming into this country to work, instead of making it really, really easy for the most talented, ambitious people in the world to come to this country to make a living, to be entrepreneurs, at any level, from whether they work in restaurants or cutting our lawn to computer programmers, entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. The fact is that this system makes it 
more difficult. Now you have points, all kinds of points. And who gets to rig the points? When the Republicans are there, the point system will favor the things Republicans care about. I don't know, speaking English. When uh, the Democrats are there, it'll favor the things Democrats care about. I don't know how socialist you are. I, I have no idea. Now you get points, and, and um, the government is going to give points to different professions. In other words, what we get is a Republican proposal for the government to decide which professions are more important than others. I don't know. That kind of sounds like Chavez to me. It kind of sounds like socialist central planning to me. Let the market work. If the market demands a certain skill set, and it let them import it. Oh, but what about American workers? Compete. Compete. Isn't that what we tell our kids? They should compete? Uh oh, if we become such a European-like lazy society in which we are guaranteeing people jobs and guaranteeing they will never have competition and guaranteeing them a middle-class life, no. Freedom entails competition. Freedom entails being good at what you do and staying good at what you do and being more productive than the competitors. Compete. And yeah, no. What, what this proposal and what most Republican proposals want to do is they want to restrict immigration. And I've been saying this for years, and I've been told, I, everybody tells me this. Oh, no, 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 you're on, you don't get it. We love immigrants. We want more immigrants. What we don't like is illegal immigration. Illegal immigration, that's the real problem. That's what we really hate. Now, this exposes that lie. It's not about illegal immigration. It was never about illegal immigration. What Trump and most of his supporters want is fewer immigrants. They don't want me to come. Why? Because I shake things up. Because <laughs> I challenge them. They don't want foreigners. Now, oh, okay, so I, 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 should, I should. Full disclosure, I am an immigrant to this country, a legal immigrant to this country. I don't know if under these laws, uh, this point system, I would have been allowed in. I don't know. I don't know if you want any more uh, finance PhDs who are, also, uh, who are also Jewish. You know, you might have enough of those. Um, who knows what the point system will do? So here's more central planning. This is why the right cannot defeat the left. Because they all agree we should centrally plan. All of them. Just the right wants to centrally plan immigration and the left wants to centrally plan. I also want to centrally plan immigration, but they want to centrally plan other things. But they all believe central planning is a good thing. They all believe the role of government is far, 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 far broader than what the founding fathers of this country believed. There's no big difference between Republicans and Democrats. just an emphasis. So... This immigration bill that is being proposed is a travesty. Anybody who believes in liberty and freedom uh, uh, should be against it. Look, at the end of the day, as an American, and I'm an American citizen now. One if, minute. If I want to go and hire a bunch of Swedes to work in my company, how is it your business? How is it your business? I mean, assume that these Swedes are uh, peaceful they're not gonna. They're not gonna kill anybody. They're not gonna. You know. They, 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 they don't have infectious diseases. They don't. I don't know. They're not terrorists. They're not criminals. What is it? Any of your business? Who I hire to work in my right. company? How by restricting immigra immigrants, particularly when it comes to work, you're restricting Funny. my rights as an American. I'm not talking about the immigrants' rights. They have rights as well. But my rights as an American, I don't get to invite people to come and work for me. But you know what? Ten. Some of the most talented people in the world don't live in the United States, and I want them. All right, we'll be Bye. right back after this break. You're listening to Ron Brooks Show. You're clear. You won't hear traditional political views here. This is the Ron Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network.
podcasts that make you think, what if? The, uh, the proclamation of 1763, which formally said, you don't go beyond the Appalachian Mountains. People knew how to get to Kentucky. There was a... A, a theoretical way to get there, mm. um, but you'd be squatting, basically. There was no way that the British Crown was going to recognize you legally living there. Check out 40 Acres and a Fool at theblaze.com slash radio, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. 800-294-1788. They've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. If you're struggling with credit card debt, Consolidated Credit Programs will teach you how to get out and stay out of debt. Call 800-294-1788. 800-294-1788. That's 800-294-1788. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services or by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM80031. Services are primarily educational in nature. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-803-6951. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-803-6951. That's 1-800-803-6951. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call for Closure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. 800-899-8443. That's 800-899-8443. The IRS is the most feared agency in the world. You've heard ads from other companies offering to help taxpayers only if they owe over $10,000. Here at Platinum Tax Defenders, we're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and we're proud to be one of the only tax firms in the country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. So whether you owe just a few thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands, Call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we come back in one minute to reduce your tax debt down to a small fraction of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800 579 4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800 579 4967. 800 579 4967. The Morning Blaze with Doc Thompson. People like Patrick Henry who were worried about an oppressive government that he didn't even support the Constitution. They're going to use it to screw us somehow. We need to write down specifically some rights that we have. No, man. As soon as you write them down, people think those are your your only rights. They're going to screw us. They are absolutely going to screw us. we got to do something about this. So this was the great debate. The Morning Blaze. Weekday morning, 6 to 9 Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network.
Yaron Brook. All right, we're talking about immigration. I don't know a single topic that gets people more upset at me than this topic. It is amazing to me how uh, angry, how vicious, how emotional people get around this topic um, more than any other topic. And to me, it suggests, I don't know, something's wrong because it, it, it's it's pretty amazing to me that um, that we can disagree about a lot of things. But this one just, whoa, you, you know, it's it's just unbelievable. Um you can call in. You you can get emotional uh, over the phone with me if you want, other than just uh, some of the comments online. 888-900-3393. 888-900-3393. Okay, so let me give you my solution for immigration today. I'm not talking about some free market utopia one day. Uh, utopia is the wrong word. Some free market um, um, country one day. I'm talking about today in America with entitlements and everything. Uh, let's take today's system, and I'll give you my solution. And then I'll, I'll take some of your objections. I know, you know, uh, uh, what if they have bad ideas, the immigrants? And what about entitlements? So let's take, uh, let's take my solution. I, and this is a solution that was actually proposed in Congress a few years ago. A, a woman by the name of Hel Helen Kriebel uh, circulated a bill uh, around this, and it, it went nowhere, unfortunately. But I, I, I thought it was actually a, a really good solution. And it, it somewhat returns back to a, an old system before 1965, before the 1965 immigration reform, which basically opens uh, divorced immigration from work. I would like to see us resurrect the connection between immigration and work as long as we have an enti a, a welfare entitlement state. And what I'd like to see is that people can show evidence that they have a job before they're, they're allowed into the United States. Again, the job could be as strawberry pickers or the job could be as a, a, as a computer scientist somewhere. Um, you know, this, this could be, in the old days, it was a sponsorship. It doesn't need a sponsorship in this case. It just needs a job. Now, for example, what Helen Kribo's proposal proposed was that we, we basically allow employment agencies to set up shop all over the world and to match employees with employers and give them the ability to grant visas after an FBI background check and all the security checks and, and all of that and, and, and so on, right? Uh, just uh, just uh, you know, a, a, um, a real background check. And... Uh, if they can match an employee with an employee, they get a five-year visa to come to the United States. Now, together with this, you pass a law that says that when you're on this visa, you cannot get welfare. Now, you, your kids can still go to public schools. You can still drive on the roads. You can still do all that. But you don't get actual welfare, food stamps, and all the rest of them. It would be illegal for you. See, if you leave your job or if you're fired from your job, you have to leave the country because there is no other source of income for you. And indeed... The visa and conditional that, that you keep a job. Now, it doesn't have to stay with the same company. You, sh you could be uh, hired by somebody else. You could swap jobs. But you can't stay, let's say, unemployed for more than three months, or six months, or whatever, right? Also, if you invest in the country, if you build, bring money in the country, if you start a business in the country, that qualifies. So if you can... If you can... Um, match individuals with jobs, then there's no rights violation going on here. The government has no job here other than to protect us from people who would physically harm us. It has no job here. And it, it just has no role. So that would be my solution as long as there's an entitlement state, is, is that combination. And again, this was a bill that had some support by some Republicans on the Hill never went anyway because it never got enough support. And, of course, as you can see, Republicans are anti-immigration. I mean, such a bill would actually increase the number of immigrants. You would get more than a million people coming into this country a year, but you would get them from unexpected places. You would get a lot of Swedes and Norwegians and Germans and Europeans and Israelis and Chinese. Although we don't like Asians, it turns out. I, 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 put, up, I put up a story about how Harvard discriminates against Asians, and there were like people on my, on my feed saying, yeah, we don't need Asians in this country. It's like, ugh, just, ugh. I find racism in all its different forms, and xenophobia in all its different forms, some of the most 
uh, uh, upsetting and disgusting uh, ideas that exist. And uh, when it, it manifests itself in a variety of different ways, but it always comes out when you talk about immigration. All right, what about, what about people who have bad ideas, right? Uh, I don't know. They could have Nazi ideas. They could have just socialist ideas. What about them? Well, I do not believe that the government should ever be involved in screening for ideology unless that ideology is explicitly associated with an enemy of ours. And we have identified the enemy as in an act of war, some kind of act, and identified that enemy and clearly articulated the case against it. So during World War II, sure, you don't import Nazis. I'd argue today, if we'd have a proper declaration of war, you wouldn't be allowing Muslim immigrants into the country, and the burden of proof would be on the Muslim to show that they weren't affiliated with radical, with the totalitarian Islam. And, and if they could prove that, yeah, they could come in, but as long as they can't, they shouldn't be allowed in, and the burden of proof would be on them. But as long as the government doesn't declare an enemy, there is no basis, legal, moral, individual rights basis to exclude people based on ideas. And for the government to have a list of unaccepted ideas, I can't think of anything more evil. The whole point of the separation of church and state in the, in, uh, the Constitution was to basically prohibit the government from excluding certain people because of certain ideas, in this case, religi certain religious beliefs. And it would be wrong. I, you know, I would expand the separation of church and state to the separation of state from ideas. It's not the job of the government, unless the person is inciting violence, to monitor and to, uh, to approve of or not approve of certain ideas. Government doesn't have that responsibility. And look, we, I believe in limiting government. Yeah, government is, 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 is not defending individual rights already. So let's expand. Let's give them more power. Let them build a wall so they can now even more closely figure out who comes into this country and who doesn't come into this country. Let's give them more authority over immigration because, hey, we're small government people. We believe in limited government. So let's expand government. I mean, it's nuts to me. Because we live in, such, in an environment with a government that is so flawed, you would never want to give that power more, that government more power over your life, and that more power over your life is by deciding who gets to come into the country and who doesn't. Now, let me say this about bad ideologies. The source of bad ideologies is not immigrants. The source of bad ideologies is university professors. So if we start having a litmus test, an ideological litmus test, then let's start deporting university professors. That will be, do more to help this country recover ideologically than anything else that we could do. But it's obvious that that's a massive violation of rights, and if, if the government starts rounding up university professors, that's a, that's a massive intrusion into our rights, and everybody knows that's wrong. But we can do it to immigrants, and we can give that power to the government when it comes to immigrants. So, so you know, so that's my proposal with regard to jobs um, and, and why I think and, and with regard to entitlements. All right, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about this. If you want to call in and get in the conversation, 888-900-3393, 888-900-3393. And you're listening to your Ron Brook Show on the Blaze Radio Network. You're clear. It's the Yaron Brook Show. The Blaze Radio Network. If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. While freeze drying your food, while creeping on Snapchat, while triggering Alexa. Pretty much any time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. 
Check out our live shows. These peoples need to be victims. Podcasts. This is Udi Jasser. We're talking about love, compassion, and on-demand programming. MSNBC feels like it's not as important as the latest with Trump and Rush. All at theblaze.com slash radio. Paid monetary spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zorelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Direct from the historic newsreels of... In cooperation with the International Broadcast Museum of East Sheboygan, this is a 30-second biography. America's 13th president, Millard Fillmore, was the first Millard and the last member of the Whig elected to office, if you don't count Joe Biden's hair plugs. After the Whig party broke up around 2 a.m. in 1856, Millard invented the popular phrase, here, hold my weave, believing the Whigs would rise again to power. He's also credited for sending Commodore Perry to open up Japan for American business and for installing the first bathtub in the White House just so he could sing his favorite song, Rubber Ducky, You're the One. You make that time so much fun. Rubber Ducky, I'm awfully fond of you. This has been a 30-second biography brought to you by the Blaze Radio Network. This is the Blaze Radio News. I'm Robin Walensky. Every morning on the Blaze Radio Network, Robin Walensky delivers the news updates you need to know. An enormous search still underway They're right now. They're going to be checking every weekend. building, every nook, every Senator cranny. Gillibrand has blood on her hands. And with an eye on your money. Conducted over 6,500 airstrikes. rallying in front of Democratic News Senator updates you need to know every morning with Robin Walensky. This is news on the Blaze Radio Network. Truth lives here. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto and Prodexa users. If you or a loved one has taken the blood thinning drugs Zarelto or Prodexa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. Zarelto and Prodexa have been linked to internal bleeding, strokes, and pulmonary embolisms. If you or a loved one has taken these blood thinning drugs and have been hospitalized for internal bleeding, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Lines are open 24-7. Call 800-553-4751. That's 800-553-4751. 800-553-4751. You could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. Come back in one minute. Medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. Reform This with Zudi Jasser. The most free, the most humane society is a secular one. Not that one that is against religion. Not freedom from religion, but freedom of religion. That begins with the ability to criticize wholly, partially, whatever percent you want, the faith itself. Reform This On Demand. Download episodes at theblaze.com slash radio. SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. This 
is the Yaron Brooks Show. All right, so President Trump's uh, immigration bill, the one the Republicans are putting through Congress, is another statist attempt to control our lives, a statist attempt to define what jobs are needed by the U.S. economy instead of letting the market deal with it. It's, it's more of the statist, collectivist, authoritarian attitude that this administration, the Obama administration, almost every administration in the last 50 years has had towards the U.S. economy and towards the individual rights of Americans. It's depressing. It really is depressing because there's no end to this. And, and I see people who claim to be advocates of liberty and freedom who, when it comes to immigration, they fall apart. They completely fall apart. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm still struggling to figure out psychologically what is going on. But, you know, you should be embracing immigrants. This is the land of the free. And if people want to come here and be free, great. Great. This country is not falling apart because of immigrants. Even California is not falling apart because of immigrants. California and the rest of the country are falling apart because of the crazy intellectuals who run our universities and run our media outlets and who write and who, who you know, who are, who are crazy statists and collectivists. And because of our, the religious authorities in this country who continuously advocate for more government intervention in our lives, they are what's destroying this country. The intellectual, spiritual authorities around us. Don't blame the immigrants. And I, I, I believe that if we had the right ideas in this country, if we stood for something, if we stood for individualism, I don't worry about the ideas the immigrants bring with them. I'm going to win that ideological battle because I've got good ideas. The problem today is that we're losing that intellectual battle because we have lousy ideas. We can't challenge socialism in Venezuela. Never mind, you know, the expansion of Medicare and Obamacare. Republicans can't even get rid of that. You're worried about Mexicans or, or foreigners coming in with their bad ideas. I'm worried about the bad ideas in Washington, D.C. Among Republicans. Which brings me to rumors about Bannon. Now, you know, these are rumors and the, the, the media, who knows what. But the fact is, I haven't heard Bannon deny them. And I haven't heard anybody deny them. So who knows? And they're consistent, I think, with Bannon's whole thinking. So the two rumors uh, that uh, Bannon, Bannon is chief strategist at the White House. Chief strategist at the White House. So this is kind of the, the thinking behind the throne, if you will, thinking behind the president, the guy who's a strategist long term. Bannon is advocating supposedly in internal meetings in the White House to raise the top income tax rate to 44 percent. To 44 percent. Um, why, uh, in order to be able to so-called afford a middle-class tax cut, because that's what's needed because of inequality in America and because, you know, I don't know, uh, because he doesn't know economics, I guess, because he knows nothing about how the economy works. Plus, he believes in massive injustice. I don't believe in taxing the rich uh, any more than taxing anybody else. There should be a flat tax if there's going to be any tax where everybody pays the same rate. I mean, the rich... The wealthy that became wealthy by producing values and creating goods and services that make our lives better already. And then we want to penalize them for that with a higher tax rate. How, did, uh, how disgusting is that? So he wants to raise it from 39.6 to 44. In California, right now, I'm paying 55% taxes. And uh, if he raises it to 44, I'll be closing in on 60%. 60%. Taxes are... Time, effort, life. He wants to take 60% of my life for his common good, for his ideas. And then the other idea coming out of Bannon is that he wants uh, Facebook and Google to be regulated like public utilities, like the old AT&T, like, like the electric power companies. He wants them regulated because they become so big of a part of our lives that we need now to regulate them and to control them for the public good, the common interest. And you tell me there's a difference between the left and the right? You want the right to defeat the left and then we can engage with the right? No, they're the same thing. They're the same thing. The collectivists, the central planners, they, they, they want to sacrifice the individual for the common good. 
Two minutes. Their immigration policy suggests this. These ideas of Bannon's about raising raising taxes and and on on, on the very wealthy and and regulating Facebook and Google suggest this. The, the fact that they can't get away with uh, can't can't really repeal and nobody really wants to repeal. Obamacare suggests this. There is no, there are no good guys in politics today. I mean, there might be a few individuals, uh, putting aside the individuals who are actually fighting this. As a group, there is no good political party today. You know, I shouldn't criticize Trump until we defeat the left. Well, there's no way to defeat the left if you position yourself as pro-Trump. There's no way to defeat the left if you are advocating for collectivistic central planning policies with regard to immigration or with regard to Google and Facebook. There's no way to defeat the left if you are a central planner. You just want to centrally plan your things and let them centrally, and you don't want to centrally plan their things. What this country needs is a revolution, an ideological revolution, a moral revolution, a revolution that upends the current ideological framework left and right. 30. We need the founding fathers back. We need a revolution of individualism and individual freedom and individual rights and the right of any individual to pursue happiness. 20 seconds. To be free to act, to pursue his own happiness in the ways that he sees fit to do so. All right. Ten. You're listening to the only show in the country that covers these topics, the Yaron Brook Show on the Blaze Five. Radio Network. We'll talk next week. You're clear. Principles of rational self-interest and individual rights on your radio. Good job. It's the Yaron Brook Show. Thanks. Oh, on the Blaze. See you in a couple weeks. Couple weeks. Yep. Ellie says bye as well. All right, tell Ellie bye.